So in this video we're going to look at solving rational equations when the solution process leads to our having to solve quadratic equations. I'm going to do two examples. So here's the first one, 3n plus 2 over n minus 2 plus 1 over n equals negative 2 over n squared minus 2n. And what I want to notice is that I can do some factoring here. And anytime you're doing these problems, you want to factor the denominators as your first step if they are factorable. So I'm going to leave myself space for multiplying. Here's my 1 over n equaling negative 2 over n squared minus 2n and then what you would want to do is notice that this denominator can factor because n shows up as a common factor in each of the two terms so I can use the distributive property to factor that n off <clears throat> and I'll rewrite the left hand side of the equation 3n plus 2 over n minus 2 and from that, what I can see is that n times n minus 2 would be a great choice of common denominator. If we were finding a common denominator, we could just multiply this by n minus 2 over n minus 2, and this times n over n, and we would have a common denominator for all three ratios. But what we're going to do here in this case is multiply both sides by the best choice of common denominator, so n times n minus 2 n times n minus 2. We also want to take a moment to look at those denominators and determine are there any values of n that would cause division by 0 and there are. If n were equal to 0 we would get division by 0 here and here and so we don't want, we actually need to say n cannot be 0 and we also can't use 2 because 2 minus 2 would give us division by 0 here and 2 minus 2 would give us a division by 0 here. So neither of these two numbers are allowed uh, as part of the solution set. So if we get uh, solution candidates that include 0 or 2, we need to e eliminate those as candidates. So now I can just go through and do some simplifying. I get n divided by n is 1. And, and on, only because we're not letting n be 0 can I do that. And because we're not letting n be 2, n minus 2 divided by n minus 2 is going to equal 1. So on this side we get negative 2 times 1 times 1 is just negative 2. And step over here I get n minus 2 divided by n minus 2 is 1 because we're not letting n be a 2. And we're going to be able to do some simplifying here. I get 1 times n is n and n times 3n is 3n squared and 1 times n is n times 2 is plus 2n. And then I get my plus e from here. I'll bring that down. I get n divided by n is 1. So I get 1 times 1 times n minus 2 is just n minus 2. And now we want to uh, combine any like terms that we can find. And I can see that I have a quadratic because I have my, my variable is to the second power here, to the first power here, and then I have constant terms. So because the highest exponent is a 2 on this polynomial, I have a quadratic equation in a single variable. So I know I'm going to need to get it equal to 0 most likely. So I'm going to write my 3n squared. I get 2n plus n is plus 3n. And right here it looks like I get to add 2 to both sides to get the 0 over here. And if I do that, I'm going to get plus 0. So I wind up just having 3n squared plus 3n. And in this case, this will be easy to factor by factoring out the common factor that shows up in both terms. There's a 3n in both terms. I can factor that out. And that's going to leave behind an n. 3n times n is 3n squared plus 1. 3n times 1 is 3n. <clears throat> And now I have it factored so I can use the zero product property. So 3n needs to equal zero or n plus one needs to equal zero. And if I solve this, I get n equals zero or subtract one from both sides, n equal negative one. But if we look back up here, we, we recall that we had to exclude n equals zero from the solution set. So this 
guy isn't going to be a solution candidate. N equals negative one is the only solution candidate. Candidate. And then we need to make sure that it works by plugging it back into the original expression. So I'm going to clean this to give myself a little room on the left hand side. And now it looks wrong. <laughs> So I'm going to plug my negative 1 in. I'm going to get 3 times negative 1 plus 2 in the numerator over negative 1 goes in here, minus 2, plus 1 over, plug in that negative 1. And if negative 1 is a solution, that needs to equal the other side, which is negative 2, over negative 1 being squared, minus 2 times negative 1. And now I just simplify and make sure I get an identity. So start simplifying, I get negative 2 over <clears throat> negative 1 squared is 1 minus 2 times negative 1 is going to give me a plus 2. And on this side I'm going to get negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1 over negative 3 plus, this is just a 1. A negative one so it's gonna be minus one right here and I get a negative divided by a negative is positive one-third minus one equals negative two over three and I need a common denominator to do the subtraction so one is the same as three-thirds so I have a negative two over three on the right hand side and I get one minus three is negative two over three I have an identity which means that my solution is n is an element of the set that contains negative 1. <clears throat> so one more example. So I see that I have something that can be factored because I have a difference of two squares. So a difference of 25 can be rewritten as 5 squared. The difference of two squares always factors easily. So I'm going to go down here, here's my x plus 5 plus my 5 over x minus 5, leaving space to do some multiplying, equals 50 over, and what I want to recognize is that this factors as x minus 5 times x plus 5. <clears throat> And then I want to look and say, is there anything that x can't be? What can x not be? Well, x can't be negative 5 because negative 5 plus 5 would be 0, and I would have division by 0. And x cannot be 5 because 5 minus 5 would give me 0, and I can't have division by 0. So negative 5 and 5 are excluded as solution candidates. I can see that x minus 5 times x plus 5 is my best choice for common denominator, so I'm going to multiply both sides by x minus 5 times x plus 5. Multiply by x minus 5 times x plus 5. Multiply by x minus 5 times x plus 5. And now go through and start simplifying. So because we're not letting x be 5 or negative 5, we can simplify x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 is 1 x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 is 1, and these are all being multiplied. So I get 50 times 1 times 1 is just 50. And x minus 5 divided by x minus 5 is 1, so I get 5 times 1 is 5, times x is a 5x, and I get 5 times 1 is 5, times 5 is, that's my plus right there, plus 25. And over here I get x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 is 1. 1 times x is x, so I can just distribute this x into that parentheses. I get x times x is x squared. x times minus 5 is minus 5x. And this needs to equal 50. That's a plus 5x right there. I have to bring my plus down. My plus needs to come down. <coughs> And then I wind up getting x squared plus 25 because these two middle terms canceled. And I see I have a quadratic, so I'm going to subtract 50 from both sides to get it equal to 0. So I'm going to get x squared minus 25. 
And this is the difference of two squareds again because 25 can be written as 5 squared. So it factors as x minus 5 times x plus 5. The zero product, uh, fact, uh, zero product um, <clears throat> says that I can break this into two equations. The zero product property. So x minus 5 either is 0 or x plus 5 equals 0 and I get x equals negative 5, I get x equals 5, and these are the two solution candidates. And then I look up here and I can see that both solution candidates are excluded because they cause division by 0. So in this case there's no solution. So we just say that x is an element of the empty set in this particular case.